What's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Hunter Fan TV. Back at you, another video about the content. This video, go ahead and smash that like button, like the content of this channel. Go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Ravens win an ugly game versus Denver Broncos 10 to 9. Uh, usually, I do standout performance and things like that. There's nothing to write home about. No standout performance to name. Nobody to even really mention. The defense did their thing as a whole overall. Good for them. Uh, but the biggest news of the day is, along with several other Ravens players, Lamar Jackson was injured. He did not return to the game. But good news is John Harbaugh said this, this injury is not season-ending. It's just a matter of whether it's going to be days or whether it's going to be weeks. We'll le they'll learn more on Monday when they go through, you know, the MRIs, checks, tests, all that stuff, all right? We're going to come back to that Lamar Jackson talk and all things like that. But let's talk about the game real quick. All right. Um, Ravens offense disappoints once again. If Greg Roman was trying to get fired, um, if he was trying to make his exit to Stanford, um, he was doing it uh, in a great way this game. Offense was dull. It was boring. And don't get me wrong. This Broncos defense is good. I don't want anybody to take I'm underestimating what the Broncos defense can do. The Broncos are now 3-9 and nine as a football team. That defense is not a 3-9 and nine defense. That offense they have, now that's a 3-9 and nine offense. Their offense is boring to watch, terrible. Um, in the first quarter, right, they was driving down the field on us, okay? Right? Pretty good job. Start first drive of the game. It's third and five. The Broncos do a run play. A straight up uh, inside zone kind of play on third and five. Russell Wilson is your quarterback. You just paid this guy a hundred and something million dollars guaranteed in a on a two hundred and something million dollar contract, and we're, you're running the ball on third and five. Anyway, they set up a three on that drive. Okay, so the Denver offense is not good to watch. Ravens offense, even with Lamar Jackson in the game, wasn't good to watch. Um, Lamar Jackson ends up getting hurt in the pocket on a sack, trying to escape pressure. Um, and this is the kind of part I want to talk about, right? I'm seeing people, I've already talked to people who are saying, oh, he's got to get rid of the ball faster, um, things like that, whatever. You cannot you cannot always blame Lamar Jackson for getting hurt inside the pocket. Sometimes you got to look at what's being designed for him to throw the ball to. All right? When Tyler, perfect example. Soon as Tyler Huntley comes in the game, we see hurry-up offense. We see quick passing game. Two things that wasn't a staple on Lamar Jackson, Right? And you can say, well, Lamar just doesn't do this well, that well, whatever. This is what I think happens. I think that Greg Roman knows that Lamar Jackson is an infinitely more talented quarterback than Tyler Huntley, right? No shot at Tyler Huntley. I like Tyler Huntley, all right? Before I even get any further into that. So, anyway, he knows, he's a, he knows Lamar Jackson is a more talented quarterback. So, he tries to do more things. Longer development plays, shot plays, the routes that take way too long to develop. Now, Lamar Jackson... Also has part in this. He has a tendency to hold the ball too long. Sometimes Lamar Jackson will sit in the pocket until the very last second instead of going one, two, three, and running, right? Which he gets the moniker of he's a running quarterback when really Lamar Jackson isn't. Most of the time when he runs, it's off with designs. Usually he sits back in the sits back in the pocket and takes what the defense gives him. At least he tries to, right? And in my, to my opinion, he doesn't run enough when the scramble opportunity is there. And to me, this was one of those opportunities. Okay, it wasn't there. These long development routes wasn't open. He should have took off. He wasn't able to. Got sacked. Okay, cool. Whatever. But so does Tyler Huntley come in the game. We see, we see hitches on the field, right? Now, I'm not saying I want a whole offense full of this, but it needs to be mixed in. And it's just not with Lamar Jackson, all right? We see quick game. We see them. It's Tyler Huntley, on the third or fourth play he's in the game, he gets to go hurry up. The Ravens start to go up-tempo. Now, it doesn't really lead me to anything. No matter who the quarterback is, this Ravens offense is still very bad in the red zone. They stall out again in the red zone. They kick the ball. It's 3-3. Uh, Broncos kick uh, get another field goal. It's 6-3 at halftime, right? This game is, is boring. It's pedestrian. It's all things you want to say like that, right? Now, also, I'm going to talk about the injuries, okay? From my count, I could, I could miss some guys. You guys let me know in the comments, all right? Lamar Jackson was injured, did not return. Carl Hamilton was injured. I didn't see if he would turn. He might have. Patrick McCarry was injured. He was back and forth and out the lineup because him and Philele were swapping spots. Isaiah Likely was injured. He caught a stinger. He came back and played. He made some catches after that. Uh, Patrick Queen was injured. Ended up being carted off uh, with a thigh bruise. That's what John Harbaugh is car calling it. Excuse me. Um, but if it is a thigh bruise, that's not season ending. Patrick Queen should be. He could be back next week or it could be a couple weeks. But a thigh bruise, if that's what truly what it is, is not a season ending type of injury. All right. Um, but, yeah, that first half, which is nothing really to talk about. 
It's born on both sides of the ball. Neither team can get anything going. Uh, the Broncos find a little bit of rhythm um, on that second time they get the uh, when they get their second field goal. They find a little bit of rhythm, but they're a boring team to watch on offense. It's like the Ravens are a boring team to watch on offense, right? So second half, you know, Ravens get the ball to start the uh, start the second half. It's more of the same. It's boring as hell, but they, they kind of get stuff going, right? Uh, Tyler Huntley hitting some quick, short, quick passes. Okay, great. Then, for whatever reason, the Ravens dial up a double pass, a d- d- double reverse, however you want to call it. Uh, Huntley goes reverse, uh, tosses the ball to David Duvernay. Duvernay tosses the ball to James Prochet, who then throws <laughs> a pass 30 yards down the field into double coverage, which is picked off. Right, I didn't even mention Tyler Huntley's interception. He was trying to escape pressure, just trying to get the ball out of his hand through a pick. All right, but this James Prochet interception uh, is a bad decision by James Prochet. One, I know it's a trick pass, and you supp- you designed to throw the football, James Prochet. I know, I know, I know. Throw the ball away or run it, bro. It was not there. It was never there. Justin Sims like he caught a pop fly. It was easy. Um. But anyway, Greg Roman, what are you doing? Why are we calling this play? What, what what are we doing, right? Now I get it. You know you want you got a backup quarterback in the game. You want to try to keep the, keep the defense slipping. It's just no, bro. No, no. If this was what if this was part of the vault, leave it locked. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that part of the vault. Um, this game I felt bad for the Ravens defense at uh really because they held it down, only allowed nine points. Um and. Besides that first Broncos drive where the Broncos kind of really just drove down the field, even though it's only ended in a field goal, Broncos got kind got down the field kind of easily. Um, besides that, the Ravens defense was locking up. All right, yeah, they like they allowed two other drives to get field goals, whatever. All right, boom. But the defense pretty much locked up. Okay, the defense played; they did their job. Even though the last drive of the game, um, they let the Broncos get in the field goal position. They had they kicked that sixty three yard. They ended up being short, but. They still did enough to win, all right? Um, so with this this Ravens game, a uh, very disappointing kind of game, right? Usually I go through each quarter, quarter by quarter, whatever. There's reasons to talk about. We can talk about the last drive of the game uh, for the offense. Uh, let's see. Isaiah Likely made, made, made a catch on the drive. The Ravens run the ball on third and three when they get down close, which forces them to call a timeout, which makes that fourth down the the last drive of the, the like. If you don't get that fourth down, the game's pretty much over is what I'm saying. When, really, on, on third and fourth, instead of running the ball and getting two yards, they could have passed the ball. Even if it was an incomplete, it's a better play. Anyway, so they go fake jet sweep to DuVernay. Tyler Huntley takes it, keeps it great. Uh, fourth and two converted. Um, then Tyler Huntley makes his best play of the game to me. Uh, he's rolling out to his left. He wants to hit Kenyon Drake on the swing route. He pump faced it. Kenyon Drake does a great play. Keep going up the sideline. Tyler Huntley hits him. Great. Now the Ravens are in position to score that like a two-yard line. Tyler Huntley punches it in from there. So now it's the game of touchdown, obviously. So the Ravens end up winning the game 10 to 9 in a completely underwhelming, uh, poor performance. Another bad performance in front of the home fans at the bank. Um, it just doesn't feel like the Ravens performed too well at home. But when I did the game preview, not not for this game, I didn't do it for this game, but a couple weeks ago, I forgot which game it was, but I was talking to my guy, Nevin. And um, pretty much I said that going into this, the rest of this season, this Broncos game worried me because of Russell Wilson, because of their defense, things like that. And, and because of the Ravens, this is what they do. Teams that, quote-unquote, aren't very good, the Ravens do not show up. They, they don't have any energy for it, right? It's just It's just the truth. It's happened for too long under John Harbaugh for it to be anything but the, the truth, anything but fact. There's only been one season, really. Only one true season as a Ravens fan that I can really remember where we just went out and whatever team we played, we played at a high standard. And that was 2019. And I don't even like referencing that season too much because that season, unfortunately, has allowed things to stay the same, Right. Gray Roman should have been let go after 2020. He wasn't because they said, well, you know, it's COVID year, whatever. We'll get back to 2019 form, blah, blah, blah. 2021 happens. Lamar Jackson starts off great. Ravens actually opened up the offense last year. It's beautiful. They passed the ball 55% of the time. Great. They uh, But Lamar gets hurt. 
So Greg Holm gets the excuse that Lamar Jackson's hurt. We'll come back next year and we'll do it again, right? Um, when Ash Alley, it should have already ended. When they, when they decided to part ways with Wink Martindale, they should have shut down the whole operation. Parted ways with Greg Roman as well. Uh, but they didn't do that. They decided to give Greg Roman one more chance. Once again, he's on like his third last chance. Um, yeah, so there's mutual interest between Greg Roman and, and Stanford. It looks like that's probably going to happen. To me, it looks like the question, that the matter is of when. Um, obviously, recruiting in college is a big deal. That's how you get your best players. Don't need to be said. That's obvious. Um, if Greg Roman just how to make that jump, I don't know if we'll make that midseason, but, you know, I wouldn't be against it. To me, this game was like watching when Cam Cameron got fired in 2012. I think it was when they played Washington. Um, they stuck up the joint versus the team versus Washington. It wasn't playing very well. Ended up losing the game, I believe. The offense was bad. And John Harbaugh said, it's time for a change, man. It's just not working. We need to make something happen, right? Watching that game, watching Terry Sports Shea throw an interception, watching how the offense played, I was like, this this should be that game. I don't know how you watch this constantly and say, hey, Greg, yeah, let's – Let's keep doing what we're doing. Let's keep rolling out how we're going and we, and say that we want to be a team that wants to compete in the playoffs. They're not that team. They're not. All right. Um, now, <laughs> the Ravens, I, I had hopes for this team. I had aspirations for this team. But now I'm just watching. Right. Because after the Carolina game, that showed me that they have not gotten over their nature of playing down to the competition. They just have it. And that's what, that's more what we're going to see. Uh, throughout the rest of the season. Um, but they win. The Ravens get to play uh, a lot of division games. I think they can have four more division games to go. Two versus the Steelers, one versus the Bengals, one versus the Browns. So, right now, the Ravens sit at 2-0 in the division. They the des Their destiny is still in their own hands in terms of winning the division, in terms of getting a, a decently high seed in the playoffs. It won't be the one seed, and I'm, I'm, I'm dashing that. But a decently high seed in the playoffs. Get at least one regular, sorry, at least get one home playoff game, excuse me. Um, but besides that, I don't know, man. I don't really know how to well, I know how to feel about this team, but that's disappointed constantly. Just because I see Gray Roman and <laughs> I'm not one to believe in sabotage, right? I'm, I'm I'm really not. But the Ravens are not making it easy. I see how the offense they call for Tyler Huntley, and I see the offense that Greg Roman calls for Lamar Jackson. It just doesn't match, right? Huntley has a way more boom, boom, read kind of offense. Lamar has to hold and pat the ball. That That's also difference in QB styles, of course. But it's also how the plays are called, man. A lot more three wide receivers on the field for Huntley, it seemed like. But, you know, things. It just it's just weird. The game was weird to watch. The game was also boring to watch. It was just a lot going on. Um, but the Ravens win, right? At the end of the day in the NFL, they say what? It's a, it's, a, it's a tough business to win in. It's a tough game. So you take your dubs when you can get them. I'm going to leave it at that. An ugly win is a win. But as far as being impressed, stand-up performers, things like that, I'm not giving any of that because nobody deserves that. Um, so, yeah, so the Ravens move on. On to next week, and that's it, man. You know, we'll, we'll see what they can do. Hopefully we get a better performance. Hopefully Lamar Jackson can come back and is not uh, too injured. And um, that's kind of it for this Ravens team, man. So, yeah, the Ravens went 10-9 uh, versus the Broncos. They got the Steelers next week. So, we'll see what happens there, man. Drop your uh, opinions and thoughts about this game in the comments. And, yeah, we'll definitely talk about it, man. It's your boy Gabriel. This is the Fan TV. I'm out.